Hello everyone, actually you know over here, as you always know, you can like my videos and subscribe in any of the guys that it's on the sites. Now let's begin, this is the early game build of the Black Blade of Chaos. What I consider early game, after getting the blade of course, we are skipping campaign and everything. If you are interested in how I level, etc, you can check out my other video. Remember, it will not be the best way to level because there are already very good leveling guys that you can follow to get to the power that you need to begin doing this build. Now, what do I consider the early stages? Until you begin monoliths, until you get to empowered and begin to get some corruption. When you begin to get some corruption, I think that you have begun the mid game. In this case, you also have killed some forgotten knights and um, get some extra thingies and as you can see here i have already killed two and gotten in my main thing 45 corruption but every single thing that i'm going to cover on this guide it's going to be zero corruption what does it mean 100 corruption and below that means normal monoliths and the first phases or empowered monoliths afterwards i will do the mid game one where i will get to like 200 and something corruptions completing the story night um, quest line and also doing some bosses but not one shotting them yet as uh, always, I like to show some clips of gameplay, so if you know if you like it or you don't, you can just go away fast or just keep up here. Now I'm going to show only two clips because as you know, I still haven't done any dungeons or anything. I'm just doing mods and getting my gear and my things up. I will explain kind of what you want to get and also some mechanics that uh, sadly don't work as I thought, but is still the first one if the 100 corruption boss of the timelines for the dragons is the rotting corpse dragon this is really annoying because as you know if you have watched my content from the previous season lethal mirage doesn't have like a way to only hit one target it hits everything in an area and if there are other mobs to hit you're going to get a spread damage so this boss is one of the worst to actually play with. I'm going to mute the sound, you can watch the clip if you want, uh, I will post it standalone. I talk about the uh, this boss sucks. Here what I do is resetting my level cadence, I'm going to explain why that is important, but just take it as a way to get extra damage. And here we will do our combo. I wait a little bit to get the extra Usenui spheres and as you can see here we did a whole um, bar until here and then he got his ward and we have to run away because it's going to explode. The problem of course is we also hit some random mobs so the damage was lower than expected. Now here we come again, we do some hits. Now, to ward things out, the last one, and here we already have, let's say, killed the boss because we have cool. You don't know what cool is, it's um, up to a percentage when we next do damage, we will instantly end the boss. Now I will show another clip, this one is going to be way, way faster, but it's also kind of a um, thing of what you will be able to do in the future. Now, let me get the clip up there. There it is. This is the Orobis just after doing that boss. I'm also going to, of course, upload the clip. And as you know, of course, Orobis has a lot less health than um, one of these Echo bosses. Uh, 
and I do the same thing. I reset my lethal cadence. You could actually begin getting the synchronized strikes and things before, but. And that's it. So he didn't die in one combo, but he died in two combos. This was only possible, of course, because I have quite a little bit of max mana. That is going to be a, some to have some importance later. But the most important thing uh, is also regeneration. Now, let's go into the meat of the build and things. It's already been five minutes, but we are going to explain absolutely everything every time because some people have not maybe watched the previous videos now my gear it's nothing crazy i got a new Senuisa sphere i've been buying zero lp ones um of course a merchant guild if you are not merchant guild it's not hard to get uh, some of these also of course um uh, some places and i should have said this first of all but to get the black blade of chaos it drops from the Heartbringer of ending the storm. You want to target farm it. You want to kill that Heartbringer to drop the sword. It drops quite a bit. But uh, the rolls are really, really white. As you can see here, you have the base weapon, of course. That is the Lachi. It has 70% roll on the multiplier. Then the Lesser Mirage cooldown recover. To be honest... I got one with 18% because um, it had good dexterity and other things. But really, even if it's only 10% or something like that, you should be able to get a good reset. Because the thing that actually hinders our career is not the lethal mirage cooldown itself, but our mana and shift cooldown. We can do something else with, um, with shift and the mana, but... That of course will be when we have more gear. Now, of course, dexterity and lightning penetration per dexterity are some of the most important points, and then melee lightning damage. We want those three to be as high as possible. Of course, I couldn't get one with four percent per five dexterity. Now, as for the void parts on, on the weapon, they are not as important, but you can't ignore them because as um, Blade Dancer and also Lethal Mage, you get huge percentage increase on all damage and it's still some flat damage and things like that. So getting Void Shred and melee damage instead of uh, only lightning damage may be good for overall damage. Now of course you don't care about Shock and Time Rot, you also don't care that much. Time Rot of course is something that you uh, deal some dot damage and increase the stun duration. So if you stun something, it gets a stun for longer. Shock also increases the chance to be stunned. So they have kind of a, let's say, some synergy. Now, for the general gear, I don't have anything. I just equip the ring that I dropped from Orobis. Uh, this ring goes in pair with the... Um, belt that you will eventually want to get. It's also giving me a lot of health. I crafted the hybrid health and I still have to get shards to get it up. For the boots, for the boots there is one mechanic that I didn't expect and I actually bought some boots and put them in the crangler and I, I played a little bit with them and then I noticed wait a second, I'm not consuming the Bion's charge uh, debuff when I'm using Lethal Mirage because when you equip the Black Blade of Chaos Lethal Mirage loses the movement tag you can see here now you can see it has a movement tag and when you equip it it loses it that makes it so we can't use Bion's Chariot I'm also going to go into the video I did before the, um, the league and also things explaining that we want a different thing. So which unique boots would you want to use now? You just have, in my opinion, three choices. Um, you have Blood of the Exile, but I'm going to explain something important uh, afterwards about that one. 
the Suleron Steps and Morning Frost. Why Morning Frost? Because we already stack Dexterity. You are going to have as much Dexterity as possible. And Flat Damage is really, really strong with things that have a lot of percentage scaling. When you also will get more damage to melee and more damage to melee and increased damage to melee. Melee, 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 critical strike multiplier multiplies everything. So getting all that flat dexterity, it's strong. In my case, I already have a lot of cold resistance, so I'm going to get the blessing and try to get some morning frost with some LP. Suleron steps use 100 and something multiplier, really good. Also works with all of our damage. And then Blood of the Exile has 12 dexterity. That is already quite a little bit of damage because as you can see here, you get 4%. Per point of dexterity, so you will get uh, 48, not bad, 48% increased damage, and also at least 8% penetration. Now, the problem that they have is they also give intelligence, so if you get intelligence, try to get the same attunement on other gear, so it's paired, and you get 3 water balls instead of 1 for Usenui's sphere this is also an item it works and it has a three second cooldown one thing that i don't know if is the um, cooldown reduction that you have on your character affects this so you can make it proc faster i do not know if someone knows please leave it in a comment would make a cooldown reduction a little bit more important although our goal is to one shot bosses so it's not that Thing here right now now as for other places these boots they dropped like like this they just didn't have any anything on the dexterity part so i just put some dexterity there and increased the um, and crafted hybrid health the best boots that you would want would be with a more cooldown recovery or with dexterity as you know is our best thing so ideally we will have a tier 7 dexterity roll on every piece of gear here i just got this for really really cheap the only thing that i needed to craft was the dexterity and the necrotic resistance the best gloves um actually some like this with mana mana region because mana region is really important right now the mana region i have um is quite a little bit 15 but you will be able to do more with if you had more mana region coated blades is uh, one of the best multipliers that we have available as a rogue and we want to max this eventually one thing about that is um, it doesn't use it with puncture so you can spam puncture with no issues that means that if, if, for example, you don't have a lot of mana, but you can still synchronize the strike, it's good because you can then puncture and shift less than mirage. And even if you go into the negatives of mana, it's okay. Now, you know uh, everything about the kind of gameplay and or also other things. Now, the gear itself, nothing crazy, as I said before. Here's some extra less than mirage. You ideally, of course, want the... Um, two lethal mirates and the mana efficiency so a tier 7 of that or dexterity i have some chests here that i wanted to craft also with shred effect or shred chance this one is something that also have some health and fire resistance here we have a tier 6 dexterity also that and now unique chests the unique chest that we would like to use let's say is Urzil Sprite or one that gives a lot of dexterity. Urzil Sprite makes it way way easier to spam Lethal Mage and there's also another one that I quite like because we are using a two-handed weapon you can use Titan Heart to have a lot more durability. It can go up to 40% health, has some armor 
and it also has some, let's say, damage, even if it's not a lot. 40% is quite a little bit, and it also works with all damage if you go for the thing. Honorable mention to the static heart that makes it so you do up to 15% more damage to shock targets and also has extra effect of armor on shocked targets. That means that they will do less damage to you if you get some extra armor rolls in your gear and get some high armor. It will make it so the percentage you get is less. Ideally, you will also want to cap glancing blow eventually, like with um, getting some more dodge or other things. That's why my helmet is also really bad. It's one of the worst, let's say, bases. You can get the critical multiplier one. Then there's a cooldown reduction one. There's the falconer one that has dexterity. That's already really good. As you know, we scale with dexterity. So if you get the dexterity base on the helmet and maybe even on the chest before doing the LP slam. Then now for this, it's the same. I have some lining resistance and this is just something I crafted while leveling. I have been trying to get some uh, good necks to no avail. I have like here some. This is one of the best bases to get, the less damage uh, over time. Because a lot of very dangerous damage is dot based. You can also get of course some fire and lightning resistance or one of the physical and necrotic. If you go for the Sulorn step, it's likely that you would need one of these. Now for legendaries, uh, uh, Nihilis and Ovnis, really good. Uh, extra skill points are really strong for Lethal Mirage in general, because even after spending my 20 points, I still have 3 points here, 4 points here, 3 points here, and 1 point here that give me a lot of damage. So that is why Nihilis and the other one is important. Now for relics, I already explained more or less the relics that you would want to get. But things like uh, this give some damage. But instead of the increased damage while building a sword, you would want armor shred effect. And you can get up to three of these or maybe four if you make a uh, room. But I don't really recommend it. Because relics are actually one of the biggest source of health and ways to fix your resistances. But let's say that you get three of these huge uh, boys. Here you can fit a fourth. And then you would only get like four little ones. Of course, you would do huge deals of damage, but you can see that I lost like so much health. Sometimes it's better to use them, put them in other places and just use the vitality, necrotic, everything with resistances and other places. Now I'm not going to bother fixing that. As for blessings, I'm still farming my blessings. And you can actually now with the new vendor, if you don't know where it is, I'm also going to make a little video. But if you don't want to bother watching that video, I'm just going to show it to you really fast while I load. You want blessings that fill the resistances that you need, of course. And also there's one really good one. I still don't have access to that one. Hello, traveler. But as you know here you can choose the timeline and then you can choose the blessing and if you have it unlocked let's see here i have unlocked the, these ones these are the minor blessings and then you have grand blessings now after we have everything here the most important one will be this one shred lightning it's our only way to shred lightning resistance and it gives up to 20 percent penetration we have a lot of penetration, but still, it's never bad. Now, as for critical strike multiplier here, you can get this one, can go really high. You can also get the void resistance or the void shred. But multiplier works with all kinds of damage. And if you go the morning frost way, 
going for the extra multiplier it's really really good now all resistances it's also crazy good and you have the critical strike avoidance it caps at 30 uh, 70 percent sorry and you just get 30 elsewhere and you have one percent chance to not be crit you can also get some random ones like extra physical damage some bleed poison we don't care about these ones really any resistances a slow hit necrotic resistance if that is the resistance that you need but i really recommend that you get the all resistances one because with that and ovnis on healies it's likely that you get enough to cap most of them now as you know this the shard drop rates are whatever i have this one with extra experience i'm not going to care that much you can get of course try and get the um, extra drop on these ones the maya sun idols the adorned ones Hello, but Papa. it's not important now there's also a really good one here this one you can get the fire resistance one or more dodge and the one that you want really is the one that gives endurance gives up to 30 percent and it's really good because we already have some less damage taken while we are low and if we have a lot of endurance and endurance threshold you can get them you are harder to kill now here you can also get the physical resistance ones that you will need of course if you are going for the shooter steps it kind of denies the minus 70 something that you get or if you go for the morning shroud um, morning frost sorry you can get shred um, the frost and so now here of course you can get some other drop rates and that will be everything for the blessings themselves we have done now blessings everything gear you saw a lot of the gameplay that was the Kind of let's say bossing without almost any gear at and now let's say for example that you want to do some clearing clearing on the monolith will be basically a spamming shift and using lethal edge there's no special technique to it or anything crazy so that's why i'm going to finish the video over here now, last things I will say will be what do you want to, let's say, get in order. Of course, Black Blade of Chaos, Cap Resistances, possible. If you can, you can get two of these rings with the um, cooldown recovery until you get one of the Orobis rings. Same thing with the Orobin Belt. You want to get, of course, some health if you can. Boots, you are going to likely use some boots with dexterity and cooldown recovery for a long while. I have here also movement speed that it does give damage. And the tree itself hasn't changed a lot. I wanted to end the video, but actually let's continue because I haven't talked about the passives. They have changed a little bit from the from the one before. I'm using five uncoated blades, as you like you saw, it's also going to be in the planner. And here we get the, um, the damage that we can. Here is one defensive point that you can take if you want to other place. But there is not like a huge deal of damage over here. We don't care about the, um, the flow now. Uh, we, go, we use four flow instead of five flow. We always crit. And we don't care about bleed because remember it gets transformed to shock chance now here we of course can't do a wield we also don't care about melee leech because we already have the ring and the skill itself has some leech you get some pack damage armor shred is important here you don't want to die so less damage taken while low health you need this point to get the critical multiplier one this is really strong and we always crit so we don't care about the less damage 
One extra shadow, really important. Getting more stacks of perfection per hit is also really good. We go into the Falconer and get the free damage that we get with haste. What I will likely do after I level more is, of course, um, cap coated plates and then get dexterity where I can. Here you have 8 points of dexterity and in maxman you have another, in this case, 8 points here. We have gotten all of the dexterity possible on the other nodes. So you have 16 more dexterity to get in those levels. And in my case, the 3 points that I need for the coated blades. And lastly, you can get some mana region here. If you really, really need that mana region, these points are actually more important maybe than the perfection and the Asu ones back, but you likely won't be able to, to change them because you need them to continue onwards. Now, as for the skills, as I said on the video that I did before, the things change. We are using these five abilities. Of course, shift is really important to get our 100% crit. We don't care about this. These are only points to go onwards. Remember that all of our bleed chance gets converted to shock chance, so we don't care. Same thing with the bleed duration, doesn't work. Now here, 20% more damage and 30% more damage, really good. This gives our, uh, us our fifth shadow for the shadow eater node. And this gives us 50% extra damage for one second. Because remember, we are getting damage per point of movement speed. Now, as for the puncture itself, I'm really going these points here, but they are not really important. Only the armor shed, but we are only going to puncture once, so we don't care. I put the, these points here because they are also not really important. If you want, you can put them uh, in my piercer to get some mana. Like to get two mana, well, better than nothing. The important one is this one, because you will bleed. And, of course, this one, because it means you get 60% extra bleed chance with something that I'm going to explain a little bit later. Synchronized Strike, this one you want to get uh, some extra levels on your helmet to be able to get here. Why is that? Uh, right now you need at least, let's say, two points you want. Uh, of course, four is the, um, the best thing that you can do, but it's better to get um, tier 7 dexterity. Here you are going to get the three points on the Crimson Storm. Of course, you remember as you get the skill, you want this one, Dark Allies, because this means you can get up to 5 shadows, 3 baseline, and then you get uh, one extra um, from the tree, and then one extra from the this point. And the cool, 15% when you hit with Synchronized Strike and the mob is less or same as 15%. It gets killed. I haven't checked if it works, if it has worked, but it's likely that it would work. Now, Umbral Blades. Um, while I was leveling and I, and I was still using daggers, I was using this point. But remember that this only works if you have a dagger. If you don't have it, it's not going to proc. So we just moved this point to somewhere else that we don't care about. Like this here, where you can it here but we don't really recall the blades or do anything with them so we just let them spin this is the important point this one and this ones makes it so your uh, four shadows um, and then five when you use shift and then consume them they spawn these blades that they do damage and they are going to help us uh, stack a uh, doom shock we already capped it pretty easily but it's still there uh, lightning Shred and Bleed. Bleed, it's important because we are going to use two of these points eventually, of course. Making it so we do 60% more damage. As for the way we do all our combo, it was already explained at the beginning. And now I am really not finishing. Like not forgetting anything. And that will be all. Sorry for the long video, but it was still shorter than the other one. I will see you on the next one.